Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy. You know what I'm saying? Sunshine Cat. Last video I built a storage computer and you guys seem to like that. So keeping with the trend of building things, today I'm gonna to be building a FPV race drone just like this one here. And just to get the two most common questions out of the way, over 100 miles an hour, several hundred feet. Now, if you're planning to follow along with the video, I'm using a FR Sky radio and Fat Shark goggles. So, depending on what gear you use, you may have to switch up your receiver and solder things slightly differently than what's shown in the video. That's just up to what gear you're using. I'll also be using the Race Flight or Flight One flight controller and ESC stack. Now, let's get into the build. That's it. That's the one. That was beautiful. I'm using the Astro X X5 Silky Virgin frame. Comes neatly packaged with some battery straps, stickers, LiPo cables, power distribution board, blue spacers, standoffs, screws, and the frame. The frame comes in 11 parts. We have the top piece, camera side pieces, some special pieces, a center piece to hold it together, arms. more arms, and the bottom piece. The arms will only go on in one way, and it looks like this. With the center piece here that holds it together like this. These short screws are actually not the right size for this. Oops. You'll be needing these longer screws to hold the arms in place. This part is probably my least favorite part of the build just because my wrists get so tired from screwing these things in and this frame comes with a lot of screws. I do like that the arms are all separate though. That makes replacing arms in the brake a lot easier than if it were just one solid piece. The downside to that of course is the abundance of screws. The frame itself is fairly light, weighing in at 117 grams. There's plenty of space on this frame to put your components, though some people may see it as a downside that this frame is pretty tall, and so a bit top heavy with your battery strapped on. I do like to stack my VTX on top of my ESC and flight controller, as it makes it feel more solid than just taping or zip tying that down somewhere, and the tall frame makes that possible. Since making this video, I've flown it crashed this drone many times and can say that this frame can hold up to a beating for sure. The only feedback or complaint about this frame I have is that the LiPo connector and VTX antenna mount on the top of the frame are really close together and so you get some interference in your video from that. But we'll get to that again later in the video. Now let's go ahead and stick these standoffs on before moving on to the next step. I go ahead and tighten these on with a 5.5mm socket, but by the 6mm that is the correct size to use. 
The frame comes with these blue spacers, but I'm looking for a red and black theme to match the ESU and flight controller, so I went ahead and bought these red spacers. I like to get as much screwing as possible out of the way up front since this is my least favorite thing to do. So I'm going to go ahead and stick these spacers on as well. Now, these you will want to use your shorter screws with that I mistakenly opened earlier. Good. So I went with some Luminaire 2207 2700 kV motors just as a personal preference on liking how these feel. I like to go ahead and screw all the motors on up front just so I'm able to determine the exact length the cables need to be to get to the ESC. I also like to stick on some shrink tubing just to make things look uniform. And then I like to zip tie that down so that there aren't any cables going where I don't want them to. I go ahead and repeat this for the three other arms. Nothing super special to take note of here. So, I got the Bolt 32, which is a 4-in-1 ESC. It comes with some copper tape, rubber spacers, cable, and 2200 UF capacitors. Some people complained about the ESC messing with the gyro on the flight controller, making it reboot randomly, and so they include this copper tape to help prevent that. Personally, I've only ever used this with the copper tape, and I haven't had any of those issues. These rubber spacers are kind of a pain to put in, so I won't bore you with me fighting them. Now it's time to cut our cables to size. I typically just hold them up to where I'll be soldering and cut, and give myself a little extra in case I mess anything up later. I then just take my easy stripper and strip all the wires. Set my soldering iron to 380 degrees Celsius for the smaller wires. Start by tinning all the pads on the ESC. In the video, I could tin them more for sure. It's just a little hard soldering anything when your camera lens is inches away from where you're working.
I then go through and solder all the individual wires and just make sure they are soaked up with solder. I like to use 0.5 millimeter solder. Just make sure that yours has rosin core flux in it to help prevent oxidation and get you a clean contact. I honestly expect to get a lot of hate here in the comments about my soldering, just because there's not enough of it here. I went ahead and re-soldered everything after shooting, just for better contact and to make sure none of these wires come popping off. out of focus. Here we're going to tend the XT60 connector and then solder on the thick wires to it. I like to use 400 degrees Celsius on my iron here. shrink tube to look a little cleaner. I like to hold the connector up next to the frame, like so, just to see how much wire can be trimmed from the LiPo wires. And I clip those off, strip them, twist them, and repeat. to get these ends tinned up before tinning the ESC where you'll be connecting the wires. Just hold the LiPo wires in place and press your iron down until you feel them sink in. Here in the video, I solder on the capacitor before the smaller wires that come from the other components. After flying a bit, I found the capacitor is typically the first thing to fly off. So, I'd recommend waiting to solder this on till last actually, since if it's under the other wires, it will rip those off with it if it comes flying off. Up next, we have the Revolt OSD flight controller. This comes with a few wires that look like these. Rubber spacers again, and of course the flight controller. Stick those rubber spacers in, and next we're going to prepare our flight controller by soldering up some connections. 
since I use a FR Sky radio, I'm going to bridge the TX1 and invert pad with solder here. Next, I'll do this to the TX4 and invert pads here since they act as a backup to TX1. Lastly, let's put on a bunch of solder onto the buzzer pads here. And I'm kind of lazy and just solder the buzzer directly onto the flight controller. If you do this, just make sure you get it on there pretty well. Let's take that wire that came with the ESC and use it to connect the ESC to the flight controller. And slide the flight controller down onto the standoffs like so. Next, take the wire that looks like this one. It has a green wire not connected to anything. We're going to detach the red wire from one end so that it looks like this. And now take the little two port connector and you're going to want to shove the green wire into the left side when you orient the connector so that the slotted sides are facing up. You should be left with something like this. Now let's take our VTX, which in this case is the AKK FX2 Ultimate, which is a 30 by 30 millimeter that stacks on top of our other components nicely. Let's go ahead and snip the LiPo connector here as we'll be soldering these wires on directly. Go ahead and unwind this cable because we're going to have to switch around all the cables on the other end of this connector. We're also going to need to cut this red wire in two. So on this end, go ahead and take out all the wires. We're going to reinsert them like so. tab side facing up, insert the free red wire on this far end, followed by the black wire, the yellow wire, and lastly the green wire. Now grab that set of wires we set up in a previous step and we're going to solder together the red wire coming from the VTX to the red wire hanging off of this other group of wires. I go ahead and use shrink tube on most everything just to help hold things together. Go ahead and plug this connector now into the top right connector on your flight controller based off this orientation. And now we're going to solder on the red wire to the positive LiPo connection, along with the positive wire coming from your VTX that previously had a LiPo connector on it. Take the negative from that same pair of LiPo wires and solder that onto the negative. Jumping subjects a little bit here, Grab this set of wires that came with your flight controller and go ahead and disconnect the white wire since we don't need that for the RXSR receiver. Set up those wires again and we're going to solder the same colored wires together to the RXSR.
I use shrink tube here again just to hold things together. Finish by winding these wires up. I slide these wires under the capacitor between the LiPo wires and have my receiver module stick out the back. With that done, we can start plugging everything in before getting to our final component, the Run Cam Swift 2. Comes neatly packaged like so, and includes a bunch of different items which we don't really need. I actually just need a couple screws and a couple of plastic washers and the camera. Plug in the green wire like so, and this other connector on the other end like so. Now stick on the sides to the camera part of the frame and screw the camera in. I then push everything together nicely and squash it all down with the VTX on top. Go through and push wires under to make it look a little better before finally going through and bolting it down. can now attach our MMCX wire and bolt this thing down. I use the Luminaire Stubby for a VTX antenna here. I like to tape down my receiver like so and then zip tie it down to be extra sure it won't go anywhere. I fly a lot over pavement, and so just for a little better landing, I like to stick on these foam pads, which are pretty cheap on Amazon. I bought these plastic tubes to help hold the antennas out the back. And lastly, stick on the foam pad on top. Hey guys, <clears throat> just thought I'd make a little side note here in the video. Something I do on the drone is put the VTX antenna right next to the LiPo connection. And also I just have the, uh, the RXSR's antennas going out the back with the little <clears throat> tubes connecting them to the back. And what I found is whenever I would crash, if I crashed on those uh, antennas on the back, it would just like snap off of the ER XSR. And so I stopped doing that. Uh, I did find this great 3D printed uh, sort of kit for the Astro frame. And so I do recommend checking it out. Otherwise, uh, I'm just gonna play a little clip of the noise that you see in the goggles over this video, uh, probably now. 
And so as you can see, it's pretty terrible. Uh, so I don't recommend putting the LiPo connection right next to the BTX antenna. Coming back here, this is what it looks like. <clears throat> so the RXSR antennas are going off to the sides with the VTX antenna in the back away from the LiPo connection. And I've been flying with this now and it's just so much better. There's not all that crazy noise. So now uh, we're going to cut to setting up the software part of the drone. Here I'll load up the Flight One app available on their website and connect my drone. It will probably prompt you to update the firmware on your flight controller. Click through the prompts and I go ahead and click the firmware available already in the app. The app then takes a while to flash the flight controller. Go ahead and select set up flight controller. And since I've done this on a previous drone with the same flight controller, it saved some of my settings for me. We then go through and orient the gyro on the drone like so. I'm going to skip over the receiver and radio settings here for a minute and skip the calibrate motor step since it's pretty straightforward and was done previously. Go ahead and follow the on-screen prompts here and connect your battery with the propellers disconnected. Go ahead and follow on-screen directions here. Simple stuff. Next it's going to have you correct motor directions. Click start motors. Now you should be able to drag your finger against the motor and tell which direction it's spinning. Compare that with the image to determine if your motors are spinning in the right directions. For me, it was just the front right and rear left motors that needed to be reversed. I like to just double check all the motors after setting everything how I believe is right. Now I'm going to bind my radio to the drone. There are a lot of guides on this process, so I'll keep this pretty brief. Start by plugging in your battery with the receiver's button held down. The red light should be blinking. On the radio, select an unused receiver number and select Bind. After doing so, unplug the battery and replug, then tell your radio to stop binding. Go into Configuration and under Radio Settings, select SBUS TX Pin and UART 1 and hit Save. Now you should be able to run the detect receiver step. Next run the radio setup. Follow along with the on-screen directions here.
Lastly, go back into configuration. All the way at the bottom will be your OSD settings. Go ahead and select internal OSD and then configure OSD layout. This next part is really up to you. I typically try and have my RSSI or receiver strength and voltage up top in plain view. Once finished, hit save and then return. To finish up, click load OSD character map and save one last time. Hello there person out there who is still watching the video. Thanks so much for <clears throat> watching and seeing through all of that. I cannot believe uh, you sat through a 20 minute video of building a drone, but thank you for doing that. Uh, so anyway, if you're still watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and you'll think about subscribing. I'll also put my other social accounts in the description below. Uh, I'm also planning to do a little uh, flight video of this drone. You can see I have them hung up behind me now and uh, that'll, anyway, planning for that to be the next video. Have a good one. Bye.